Um, so, uh, yes, uh, we, the authors, are from the Institute of Robotics and Mechatronics uh, at the German Aerospace Center. Um, so we work with robots, and all of our robots have a red button. And this is what we call the kill switch, which sounds, sounds quite dramatic, but it's uh, the emergency stop button. So if a robot is doing something wrong or dangerous, then uh, we press the button and the robot stops moving. And inspired by that, I pose the challenge to make a green button for every robot, where if you press it, the robot explains what you're doing. So you press the green button and the robot says what, what, what it's doing. And if you press again, it then starts explaining why it's doing what it's doing. And we then, let's say, implemented this idea uh, or this challenge in a hackathon. So one week, uh, let's say 25 people uh, were hacking away in five teams, um, uh, addressing this challenge, implementing their green button for different domains, space, healthcare, industry. And then we had a nice demo tour, uh, some pictures of which are shown below there. And uh, here at the bottom is a link to a blog in which I explain in a bit more detail uh, what we were doing there. and, and um, and uh, please have a look there if you're interested. So our midterm aim with this challenge is first of all to make it global. Um, so not to make a formal challenge out of it, but basically it would be nice if all robots on earth have a green button. Yeah, that would be great. So we're trying to involve roboticists in that. It's also very much a public outreach action in the sense that Explainability may be a, that's sort of an intangible concept, but a green button is very tangible. So for, for the general public, if they can press such, such a button and the robot explains what it's doing, that's, I think, something that's intuitive for, for everyone. And um, especially, and more about that later, um, I think it's a good uh, action for, for strengthening ties between the knowledge representation and robotics communities. So a bit of front matter first. Uh, today, um, um, Federico and uh, presented already or mentioned Lime, and uh, Bart Costco also presented Rule Foam, and these are um, let's say methods which do a post hoc explanation of, of uh, neural networks or other data driven uh, models. Uh, and uh, here, the the general principle is that you learn first and you explain later. Okay, that's, uh, that's how I interpret these methods. So this reminds me always a bit of Sigmund Freud, because uh, the, one could say that the deep network, uh, you know, the knowledge about why it's giving this output is uh, implicit, but in its subconscious, if you will, and uh, it needs to be made explicit by an external algorithm, yeah, where, where Lyme would be sort of the Sigmund Freud of such algorithms. So, um, here in this approach, it's like psychotherapy for, for deep networks. The important thing is learn first, explain later. Now in robotic planning, that's very different. Uh, here's some images from the DARPA robotics challenge where robots had to do various tasks. And um, because robots interact with the real world, with objects in the real world, uh, objects designed by humans with a certain purpose, robots usually uh, behave in a purposeful manner, or at least they try. And because of this, we, can, we humans can usually explain what a robot is doing. For instance, if you take these two images, I think uh, most of you would be able to explain to me that this robot is grasping the handle, uh, probably uh, for opening it. So that's the reason why it's doing that. In fact, the, 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 the scene is a bit different, but that doesn't really matter here. Uh, the, the thing is, the point I want to make here is that if we humans can explain what the robot is doing and why, due to our prior knowledge about objects in the world, robots need this prior knowledge in order to explain their behavior. For me, there's, there's no way around this. Um, so the issue here is not that, that knowledge about purpose is implicit, as in, as in, in uh, neural networks, but that uh, developers do not share the explicit prior knowledge that they have about the purpose of actions and, and objects with the robot. So it's sort of hidden from the robot because you don't, don't implement it. And I would say that's about 90% of the robots, uh, 99 if you include industrial robots. They don't know what they're doing. So to summarize, we have this sort of uh, explainability in deep learning, which is driven mainly, there are other approaches also, but mainly by learning first and explaining later, which is, let's say, a Freudian form of explainability. But in robots, it's more about making the explicit explicit, if you will. Perhaps saying making the explicit interpretable would be better. So the challenge is here 
for knowledge representation from my point of views, how to represent, uh, how can I encode the knowledge that I have into the robot? What knowledge representations do I need for that? Then the second challenge, interpretability, is a lot easier, I, I would think. There it's about uh, enabling the robot to explain its internal symbolic reasoning. And, and, and that we have one of the co-authors uh, studied philosophy. So he pointed out that uh, this is quite close to the Wittgensteinian point of view um, where uh, he, he philosophizes a lot about symbol systems and how they relate to each other and, and how, how meaning arises. But basically, once you already have a set of symbols, it's easier to map that to another set of symbols uh, than if you have, let's say, some sort of subconscious implicit knowledge. Okay, so um, my motivation or our motivation for participating uh, in this workshop today is, as I said before, making stronger ties to the knowledge representation community. So, so what's in it for KR? Um, well, I'm biased, but I think robotics is really cool and uh, we have some awesome applications with a very high societal and economic impact in, in industry, healthcare, space, etc. So um, uh, I think uh, the knowledge representation community can profit from that and, and apply their uh, methods to, to our use cases. Um, what's in it for us, for robotics? Um, well, uh, one thing that we really profit from is the formalization in terms of planning. Uh, so we use PDDL a lot and we don't write our own planners for that. We, we simply look what's happen going on in the community, look at the competitions, and we, uh, we take the planners that fulfill our needs. So we profit from that greatly. Uh, we use ontologies in an, uh, increasingly. Um, that's also coming from this community. And um, here, of course, the main topic today is the improved formalization of explainability. That's something where we as roboticists haven't worked on a lot yet, um, but I've seen many interesting work today uh, on that already. So um, after this sort of motivational intro, um, I'd like to highlight the solution of the winning team that we had at the internal challenge. And for this, you need to know a little bit about action templates. Um, they're one of the, the main formalisms we use for planning, for hybrid robotic planning. And um, it was developed by Daniel Leiter and uh, he won a PhD award for this, for the, the best PhD thesis in, in 2018 in robotics. And we're quite proud of that. Um, the hybrid planner, uh, why is it hybrid? Um, an action template always has a symbolic header, uh, which is essentially PDDL. And we use, let's say, standard planners, uh, fast downward or in the past fast forward to um, generate plans from these symbolic representations. But each action template also has a geometric part. And there we encode information which is relevant for the motion planner, which is relevant for the controller, how much force do you need to apply, what is the impedance, what is your stiffness. Um, so it's a, it's a hybrid representation where we use part of the formalisms from the knowledge representation community and tie them into the algorithms that we use for motion planning and control. And uh, this was used, I believe, now already two years ago, correct me if I'm wrong, I think some of the co-authors are there, uh, by Alexander Gerst, um, an astronaut who was on the International Space uh, Station, as you can see here. And um, he sort of communicated with Justin through these symbolic representations. So he would give commands to Justin which would be uh, the, the commands that were available to him were filtered by their preconditions using these PDDL representations. And this made it much easier for him to control our robot Justin on Earth uh, to perform tasks such as uh, cleaning this solar panel. Okay, Our vision is that one day a robot like Justin, not Justin itself, will be on Mars and people will be controlling these robots in orbit around Mars, uh, because it's not likely that people will be there first. It's probably robots that are going to be there first. Um, a word about grounding. So um, the, uh, th this slide just highlights sort of the, the trouble you get into when you want to uh, apply these hybrid formalisms to uh, robotics, because you need to represent many things, not only the planner, you need a world representation, where am I, which accuracy probabilistic models, you need to represent your objects in a big database, properties of the objects, what you can use them for, you need geometric planners, you need motion planners, grass planners, and all of this is, uh, is sort of integrated into the geometric representation with the symbolic representation on top. But this is sort of where our, our blood, sweat, and tears uh, goes into, in, into making these kinds of things work. 
Now coming to the, to the symbolic part of this. Um, so this is a slide which usually uh, one needs to present for roboticists, but I, I think I can go through it quite quickly today uh, for, for this audience. Um, the actions in the action templates, the header is in PDDL, standard preconditions, effects, parameters. The body, as I said before, is a geometric grounding to actual robot operation. Um, the goal state is a conjunction of atoms, uh, standard PDDL. I, I think uh, this in this community it's uh, no. So a plan generated from that is an ordered sequence of actions from the initial state to the goal state. Um, that's uh, what, what we uh, use your planners for. Then uh, there's this added theorem. It basically says that if you do not have any superfluous actions, so if your planner outputs a plan in which every action is useful and you're not doing things back and forth, um, then each action has to ha must have at least one effect that is either the precondition of a later action, it enables you to, to, to do something later on, or it's part of the goal state. Uh, the action is there to achieve your goal. Okay, that's uh, PDDL in a nutshell for us. So here's an example of a plan generated from that. We have an initial state of a robot, Justin, who needs to wipe this solar panel um, because solar panels get dirty on, on Mars. And if you don't wipe them, your energy runs out. It's a concrete problem for, for rovers and, and solar panels in general. And the, the aim is that you have cleaned the panel and uh, you've stored your, your wiper nicely where it belongs, okay? So we can see a plan generated from that. And uh, it's basically unlocking the panel, rotating the panel so you can reach it, uh, grasping your wiper, uh, wiping the, uh, the panel, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, what I'm going to show now is uh, essentially sort of a goal regression algorithm, which, which has been proposed uh, sort of many times. Um, uh, this is not our, our contribution here. I just want to explain how it works on this particular application. So um, something is blocking my screen. So I have to move something. There we go. Um, so the goal state uh, has a clean panel uh, uh, atom. Uh, at the end, you want your panel to be clean. And the action responsible for doing that is clean the, this panel one with uh, your wiper and your left arm. Okay, these are the parameters of the clean action. So this arrow indicates that this action is responsible for this cleaning. And the sim uh, same version for storing your wiper uh, once, once you've used that. And we can sort of focus again. You can sort of backtrack and look at uh, all backtrack through these actions and see which previous actions make uh, their preconditions true. And uh, yes, you can you can run that, and um, in the end, basically everything will be linked to your initial state. And then you've uh, sort of made an analysis of which action enables you to perform which action afterwards. As I said, this is not nothing new. This is not state of the art. Um, we find it good to have this in a separate algorithm and not as part of the planner so that we can apply this to different planners um, and or sometimes if need be hand coded sequences of PDDL actions. Okay, so once we have this causal graph, we can use it to generate explanations. So when you press the green button on our robot, Justin uh, will report what it's currently doing. Yeah, so it's, it's somewhere in the plan. It has this, this stack of the actions it needs to do. And it's currently rotating the solar panel with its right arm. And then you would say, well, I'm executing the action, rotate panel one, right arm. Uh, you know, this could be said a bit more in, in more natural English, but we only had one week. I think this is a, a satisfactory result uh, in that time. If you press the button again, uh, then Justin would say, well, I'm, I'm executing that action because I want to achieve a state in which panel one is rotated. So why do you want to rotate it? Because I want to clean the panel with my left arm um, and etc. Why? Uh, because I want to achieve a state where the panel one is clean. And that's already the goal state. So you can press again. Um, then Justin will say something interesting. He will say, I don't know, nobody told me. So essentially for the, the, the robot horizon uh, never goes beyond the goal state. And I think this is also important to communicate because sometimes people are fearful of robots uh, taking over the world or, or apocalyptic visions. Um, for our robots have no such intentions because their, their horizon does not go beyond the goal state and they do, they do not set their own goals. 
Okay, and uh, maybe to add, uh, we have a, a text-to-speech generator based on deep learning, which uh, allows Justin to, act to actually pronounce these sentences in English language. Okay, um, so some of the results of the other team. I'm not so used to seeing with the move this year. Sorry, um, uh, Rick, uh, don't yes. mean to interrupt, but uh, should probably try winding it down. Okay, how, how much time do I have left? Uh, you have five minutes, but that's including questions. So okay. maybe a minute. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Sorry. Uh, no, no worries. No, no. Um, so um, this slide is to highlight uh, the results of the other teams, which did not use PDDL, but they found other approaches to um, addressing explainability. Um, so I'll skip over that. Um, I think the main results are uh, within the department to raise awareness for sort of the challenges in explainability and what it is. And I think we found very interesting design patterns for explainability in these really complex systems that, that act in the real world. And we had a lot of fun uh, doing it. Uh, this is, of course, very important, at least to us. So the conclusion. Um, so my main aim being here today and, and submitting this, this work together is to make stronger ties between the knowledge representation and robotics communities. Um, we need planners, we need uh, ontologies, we need a strong formalization of concepts such as explainability, and we need you for this. Um, I think also it, it's, you know, credit uh, due, give credit where credit is due. The current, uh, let's say, I want to say hype, I meant uh, enthusiasm around AI is caused, I think, mainly by deep learning. Um, but uh, sometimes people are confusing AI as being identical to deep learning, and uh, that's not the case. So I think we need to make this clear to policymakers, to uh, funding agencies, and the general public. There's a lot more to AI than deep learning, and knowledge or representation is part of that. So, um, summarizing, if you're interested in working with or at um, our institute, uh, please uh, send me a message through a Zoom chat or email, and, uh, and let's start talking. Okay. Thank you very much.